Hey, it's cool here if you don't know, and it is time for some more of the long run where we are playing the longest journey. Like the stream information should now say. Uh, last time we uh, had to delete some uh, police records in order to be introduced to this colorful fellow. After which we ended up um, back in uh, Super Magic Land. Uh, where we have to go to the library and learn something about the Drake, and we had to com no, we had to uncommit some crimes. But that's what we did with the kid's record, right? And so I asked this guy to put to show us a book, and uh, this ended up happening like five minutes before the end of the stream. There is a lot of book to read. Also, hello, uh, Alex and Zero. Can you show us that book again? Oh! Oh, goodness, it's you again. Oh, you gave me such a fright. Could I see some more books? Oh, certainly. What a silly question. I'd like to read The Silver Spear of Grimon again. Certainly. So this time we'll have we'll actually have time to read the book, provided that this uh this man's shambling doesn't take too long. Also, I distinctly remember you putting that book over here not putting it back over there where you got it originally. So I don't know what kind of magic that is, but like... Bit of a continuity error there. I did find something of interest. I'll leave it here for you to read. I mean, I guess, Zero. Hmm. <clears throat> So I don't know how re how readable this is to people on stream, but uh, it looks fine for me. So let's. Also, this that last sentence seems to kind of cut off in the middle. I don't know if it continues on the next page. Okay, it does. The Silver Spear of Gorman. In the glory days of Bakshiva, before the drought, when Goromon was the greatest city in the known world, the Peric of Bakshiva decided to forge the most powerful weapon in the world to challenge the mighty white dragon. The Peric had grown greedy and bored. His treasure hole, uh, his treasure hold filled with the uh, riches, of, with the riches of the world, and he desired nothing except uh, the one thing he could never have: the unborn daughter of the white dragon, the fairest, purest, most beautiful creature in the universe. He had asked the white dragon for her daughter's hand in marriage, but she had refused, scolding him for his insolence and wanting to keep his distance from her mortals. And so the Peric sought to uh, sought the advice of a mighty sorcerer, the dark and cruel Aos, to learn how to kill one of the Drake kin. The, so the sorcerer told the Peric of the white silver of Mount Tr uh, Tyrney the strongest substance in Arcadia, and how it could be forged by magic to kill even one of the kin. The Peric ordered his army to go north, across the ocean, and to bring back enough white silver to shape a weapon. When his men returned with the rare metal, the Peric ordered the finest blacksmith in Bakshiva to his castle, where Aeos the sorcerer had cast a spell... Uh, no, where Aeos the sorcerer cast a spell to create an unholy forge. Ten days and ten nights it took before the exhausted blacksmith could present a tall spear to his emperor, but before this, the spear could be used to kill one of the kin, it had to be bathed in blood. Beheading the poor blacksmith and the, sol uh, the soldiers who had retrieved the white silver from Mount Tyranny, the peric's private bath was filled with their blood. That's... okay, sure. Uh, ha as he dropped the silver spear into the red bath, washed over by Aeos, a terrible scream erupted and steam rose up in a red, foul-smelling cloud. When the steam lifted, the blood was all gone, and the, the spear was glowing in a deep red color. 
With the terrible weapon now ready to be wielded, the parrot issued a challenge to the white dragon to either surrender her daughter for, uh, to him for marriage or to suffer a painful death at his hand. Enraged, the white dragon refused him yet again and flew uh, to meet the parrot, his sorcerer, and his thousand-strong army on the green fields outside Gorbon. Of the magical silver spear, she knew nothing, and the parrot kept it wrapped in cloth by his side. Bring your forces around Parrot, warned the white dragon. If you do not, I will lay waste to them all. I wish my men no harm, lied the parrot, for this is between the two of us. He then rode forward alone and dismounted his horse, but stayed within reach of his spear. The white dragon landed before him, and he said, You are brave to face me like this when you know you cannot harm me. Then the parrot raised the hand as if to greet her, but instead it was a sign to his sorcerer, the terrible Aeos, who cast a mighty spell to hold the white dragon while the parrot drew his silver spear. The white dragon fought bravely, and she was close to escaping the sorcerer's magic, but the parrot was quick, and he thrust the magic spear into her chest. She screamed in pain and anger, and the sorcerer's spell could no longer hold her. Rising hot on her beautiful wings, blood pouring down on the land below, she cursed back Shiva, the parrot, and uh, her parrot and her people for all time. Uh, wherever the white dragon's blood fell, the land turned arid, and the grass became sand. The parrot sent his army to follow the white dragon and to bring back her egg. But the drought grew, and within days, the once proud empire of Bakshiva was turning into a desert. Then followed a fierce storm that tore across the land for one hundred days and nights, and when the dust settled, there was nothing left of Bakshiva but two coastal cities and a few scattered oases. It is said that in the buried ruins of a lost capital, ra uh, wrapped in the arms of the pair who dared test the immortal, rests the, uh, rests the silver spear of Gorma. Are you done? Uh, let me take that back for you. So what I got from that is somewhere in the desert there's a corpse with a spear that we are going to need for some reason. Also, why are you poking him in like again. a ribs? You gave me From such a the back. That's creepy. Please don't Could do that. Shoot me? A book on the history of Mercuria would be interesting. Ah, an extensive subject to be sure. I will do my best. Look at him go. He even pokes at a different shelf. It's like these books are in different places. Excuse me. I did find something of interest. I'll leave it here for you. Sure thing. Travels in the Northlands by Jemaine the Discoverer, the first part. In my many years as a traveling poet and bard, I have journeyed far and wide across the fairy realm of Arcady, and I have seen sights most people have not dreamed. I have stood on the magnificent and terrible southern capes in the midst of winter when the storms are at their fiercest while waves are as tall as the towers of Altabon washed over my frozen body. I have witnessed the monstrous beasts that lurk in those dark and deadly waters of the south swallow brave galleons whole, creatures of the size of mountains that with a flick of a tail can touch the depths of the sea and the stars themselves. I have crossed the great ocean from north and south and from east and west, and in, uh, in the course have been stranded on desert island with no sustenance but what I could gather from the sparse vegetation for months at a time. I have ridden the giant, the giant Elguan across uh, Kangagriel, the wasteland, from Altabon to Monturba, and further south, where the Teruk, the oasis, are few and far between. And I have seen the shifting dunes above the ruins of Goromon, precious jewel of the ba Bakshivan Empire, concealed for centuries by the coarse and te uh, treacherous sand. 
and I have journeyed far west, carried on goodwill and destiny by shadow ships, to the strange and unknown cliffs of a world unseen by most, a world of an unfam unfamiliar tongue and customs of uh, and ah. The strange and unknown cliffs of a world unseen by most, a world of an unfamiliar tongue and customs, a world of great wonder and mysticism. I wonder if that's stark, actually. Um, I have seen all this and more, but the fairest sight still I have seen in the lands of the north, from A. Reed to the border mountains, from Tyron to the Bay of Fire. No sight can ever compare to dawn at Mount Tyrony, looking out to the plains of, of Nedra, where wild stallions roam free in the thousands, and to look on the city of Coruscant, the Pearl of Fire, where the, while a boiling sun sets in the ocean beyond, the slow waves reflecting dark and yellow red, as uh, dark yellow and red rather as they lap slowly upon the sandy shores as experience truly treasured and near forgotten these lands are blessed by the creator shaped by men yet wild and free and fertile home to the greatest cities the most precious sites and the most cultured and civilized people in arcady uh, of all the fires i have rested my weary legs by of all the taverns where i have learned the legends of tale spinners and memorized the songs of bards of all the lands where i have wandered from city to village it is to the northlands i return time and time again to learn evermore join me now for i will evoke in you the very emotions i first experienced when visiting the sights and treasures of the northern lands join me and i will surely bring you there uh, to the exotic midst of this blessed land, and you will pine for its rugged coast and green woods and its hardy people, and like me, you will ne'er rest until you can return to yonder shores. Marcuria, O oh, Marcuria, the, thou unkept diamond, of capitals thou art by truth the fairest, thy counsel many seek for knowledge, kept within is centuries sought and gathered, by men wiser than the ages brought hither by word of mouth. Marcuria, change, uh, change thou not the course of war between thine people? Diplomat, wise man, magician, all this and more, thou hast without equal the mark of merit and virtue, written by Germain uh, Erthrin, the poet. The august capital of I read, uh, the unified country, Marcuria, lies uh, on the... Uh, on the hardy southern coast of the Northlands, halfway between Tyron and Coruscant. It is a port, uh, a port of call for merchants, traders, adventurers, and pilgrims from all four continents, a place of commerce and diplomacy for millions of humans and other species. I read is a strong and proud land perched between the plains of Nedra to the north and the land of Tyron to the west and the great sea to the south and the forests of the Northlands to the east and inhabited by humans, Dolmar, uh, Dolmari rather, Tyron, Mole people, and Venner. I read was formed after Marcuria uh, emerged as a major center for diplomacy and trade and became the banner under which the surrounding lands united as one. A read, uh, I realize it keeps saying like a read or I read. I don't know. I'm. Let's go with one or the other. Doesn't really matter. Uh, I read is a democracy currently led by the chief council of the I read flag, Lord Ed von Dellen. Uh, the high council, composed of the ministers who govern by representation, resides in the Marcuria Hall of Assembly, flanked by the palace and the barracks. The Irides are traditionalists and their form of government has barely changed over the last few millennia. In high tongue, I read means unification or assembly. Mercuria is uh, one of the largest cities of Arcadia. Also changing between Arcadia and Arcadi? I don't know. Uh, the capital of I read, and a center for trade, diplomacy, and cultural diversity. Populated by a large variety of races from human to venner, Mercuria has grown from its origins as the birthplace of humanity to a city of all Arcadians and the hub of the civilized world. Founded 20,000 years ago at the shore of the then unconquerable ocean, it is the first known permanent settlement of the emerging human race. It initially left to its own devices by more developed races, Marcuria grew large and fat and wealthy. With newfound confidence, it passed through a period of expansion which gained it a reputation as a merciless aggressor, which soon brought violent attention for the Tyrant in the west and the Dolmar, uh, Dolmari in the north. 
After years of war, Marcuria was decimated and subsequently rebuilt with sufficient reinforcements to weather attacks from both sea and land. Peaceful times followed, whereupon Marcuria uh, settled into the role it has in today's Arcadia. Although all surrounding areas fall under its jur jurisdiction, there is sufficient self-governing and few central taxes to appease all but the most disgruntled. The, the huge areas of farmland around the city benefit from the well-kept roads, markets, and the busy, busy export to other lands. Nearby villages benefit from the, from the military might of Marcuria, protect them, protecting them against roving barbarians and tyrant armies. In Marcuria also provides the people of the Northlands uh, with one of the best and busiest ports in Arcadia, allowing travel to distant destinations around the world. Unfortunately, it seems like the rest of the book has been lost to something. I don't know. Are you done? Because it doesn't really seem like that book really was supposed to end there. I, I also don't know what we're supposed to gather from that. Of course, the problem is when I'm reading, so like, especially when I'm cold reading something out loud, I tend not to retain it all that well. Oh. Could I see some oh, shit. Also, what other options do we have? Okay, so the the only other option we have is Arcadian folk. I'd like classes. to read some a favorite topic of mine. I have just what you're looking for. Okie dokie. Really wish I could like skip this uh this slow retrieval of information. I did. Got it. Okay, one more book. How many pages is it? A few. <laughs> This one might be longer than any of the others. Hopefully this uh, this will be useful. Because <laughs> sometimes, e even in legend, there is uh, a kernel of truth in there. Sadra, the faithful white. White? That's great start there, Kulia. Sadra, the faithful wife. Sadra was married to a brood of a man named Kara. Uh, he was a bully who drank, cursed, gambled, and beat up his wife when he'd lost coins at the cup's table. Still, Sadra treated Kari with respect and care. She fed him when he was hungry, she made his bed and washed his back, and she laid down with him when he, when he told her to. I don't like this book already. Holy crap. She never complained of her hardships to anyone, even though some days she woke up with bruises all over her body. I'm going to have to have, like, a content warning for this, aren't I? Because holy crap. Despite her husband's treatment, Sadra was a beautiful woman with, dark, with lovely dark hair and green eyes, and men would admire her when she went to the market for food or, on the town, uh, or to the town well for water. But none dared approach her, fearing her dangerous husband more than they admired her beauty and grace. People would say, poor Sadra, she deserves better than what she has. She is so good and patient, even though her husband mistreats her every day. But no one was willing to do anything to free her from her from her husband, as they all feared his wrath. She chooses her own path, they would say, and it is not our duty to interfere. Then one day, a tall and handsome prince rode into the town to visit, uh, to visit with the elder council. When she spotted Sadra carrying two heavy buckets from the well to her home on the edge of town, he was taken with her beauty and youth, and he jumped down from his horse to carry her buckets home. On the way, he offered Sadra courtship, but when told he, uh, she was already married, he bowed respectfully and excused himself for acting inappropriately. That night, Sadra's husband heard about the prince helping his wife, and after striking her down for letting royalty interfere with her duties, he strode uh, drunkenly, for he had already had his usual fill of dark ale, toward the tavern where the prince and his cohorts were staying. When Kari arrived at the tavern, the prince was eating dinner, and uh, when told Sadra's husband was there to see him, the prince stood and waved the man closer. I must congratulate you on your good taste and marriage, said the prince. 
for your wife is the most beautiful and good-hearted woman I have ever met. And then he offered Kari a seat in the uh, Talmud of Ale. But the angry husband did not appreciate the prince's advances, and he drew a sword and lunged at the prince before his guards could react. The prince was quick and lucky to avoid certain death, and before Kari could make a second strike, the prince had recovered his sword from where it stood by the wall and stood ready to fight the boot. Leave him be, called the prince, when his guards drew arms and, uh, to, and ran to protect their liege. Uh, this is between him and me. Smiling briefly, he, he nodded his head to Kari and stood to attention. Obviously, his skill with the sword was formidable. Uh, Kari, coward at heart, knew that if he fought fairly, he would surely die, and he sheathed his sword but loosened the knife he had tucked up under his long sleeve. He had tucked un up his long sleeve. My pardon, Prince, said Kari. My love for my wife is such that I am blinded by jealousy. I offer you friendship and apologies. He extended an open hand to the prince and smiled a broad lizard smile. The prince, unaware of Kari's mistreatment of his faithful wife, smiled back, put, uh, put down his sword, and extended his own hand. Your apology is accepted, sir. Then suddenly Kari's knife was, uh, was in his hand and moving in a blur toward the prince's exposed throat. Had it not been for the quick eye of a nearby guard, who with the broad side of his sword struck Kari on the side of his head, the prince would have been dead. The knife carved a deep scar in the prince's shoulder, but did no serious harm. Kari was taken away to the town prison to be judged when the sun rose. His crime was surely punishable by death, especially if Sadra would testify to his cruelty in front of the judge. Free of Kari's tyranny, the, the townspeople now spoke of Sadra's suffering by her husband's hand. But Sadra would not herself even now speak against her husband, and instead of being sentenced to death, Kari was sent away to work uh, the king's mines for twenty-five years. Taken with her faithfulness, the prince yet again offered Sadra, uh, Sadra courtship, but again Sadra defi uh, declined, rather, uh, for she was still a married woman. Then one year later, Kari attempted to escape the king's mines by killing two guards and climbing the walls, but he was shot down with an arrow and died in agony and disgrace. Again, the prince visited Sadra's town, bringing condolences and a renewed offer of courtship, and this time Sadra agreed. Months later, the prince and Sadra were married in a glorious ceremony, and when the, the old king died, the prince became regent and Sadra his queen. She was as, loved, as, she was as good a queen as the land had ever seen, and she was loved dearly until the day she died, and, the fu and her funeral was the grandest and most tearful in memory. And nothing of value was lost. Pretty much. Also, I don't really know where, what we are supposed to get from that story. I, like, again, I don't know what these books are other than flavor text. And I didn't really like the flavor of most of that text that we just read. Um, maybe this second story will be a little better. The Children of the Lake. There was a village by a lake where no, uh, where no couple had borne a child for twenty years. The villagers were desperate, for without children their village would wither and die, and they turned to their god for help. The next morning, fifty young children rose out of the misty lake and wandered onto the shore, as much, much to the joy of the childless women. We are yours, said one of the children. As long as you remember one thing, you are never to fish from this lake again. Instead, you must learn to hunt in the forest and live off the land. The villagers agreed, though they worried they might go hungry since they were used to catching and eating fish from the lake. But it did take long before they taught themselves to hunt and grow wheat and potatoes in the fields. Eighteen years passed, and then one day an old man grew tired of rabbits and deer and potatoes and bread, and he longed to catch a big fish and cook it over a sizzling fire. He took his boat out to where the villagers would not see him and sang his line. Almost immediately he, ca he caught a large trout, but as he was rowing back to shore, he saw the children of the lake wander from their homes back into the dark waters from whence they came. The, their mothers called for them, tried to hold on to them, begged them not to leave, but they would not speak, and one by one they disappeared into the lake. The old fisherman then saw, as the children sank into the murky waters, how they turned into large fish and sped off into the deep. He was shameful then, and dropped his catch back into the water, but it was too late, and the village would, for would forevermore remain childless.
Are you done? Uh, let me take that back for you. Throw him in the lake. It's like we literally have one rule and you broke that rule, you absolute asshole. So those are some books. Um, let's let's double check to see if there's like any like after reading Can those three books, more? if it like unlocks another one. Interesting. It says I'd like to read some more Arcadian folk tales. I'd like to read some more Arcadian folk tales. Did I mention how much I like folk tales? Just a minute. Let's see if this is different tales or if it's uh, just the same book again. I did. Okay, it's the Are same book again. Uh, let me. I'm glad. I'm glad we wasted all that time just to find out it's the same damn book. Okay, so um, I don't know what that did, if anything. So the books we've read today, are those all the books we've read total from here? Uh, yeah, we um, we didn't actually read any books uh, in the previous stream. I took out the first one, saw how long it was, and decided, now nah, let's wait until next time. I mean, the, the only book that we haven't read at this point... I've managed to hold on to my diary this far. ...is uh, the diary. <laughs> Which I guess I would have to access from here. Do, 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 do. And this just keeps getting filled out. Mm. So if they've got records going back a thousand years, maybe they have something about the whereabouts of this of the disc the jewels, or even the entrance to the Guardian's realm. Interesting that the cursor changes when I'm over the text. I click on this and nothing happens though, so I have no idea why. I mean, we, at this point we've read all of the books and there's nothing else that we can ask the librarian. But yeah, maybe maybe reading the diary here will get me a little on track. And uh, Sentinel Enclave, which is where we are. Keeper of books. And he's a librarian. Brian Westhouse tells us exactly the same thing. So yeah, like, unless reading one of those books uh, unlocked a story trigger that's going to come out when we, um, when we leave this place. The water's pretty cold. Okay. It's a pool of seawater. You'd think that it'd be a bad idea to have a pool inside a library on account of the moisture, but I guess magic makes everything possible. Man, it's uh, it was a great thing when scientists invented magic. 
And just to review, the wheel is stuck. What budge? Um, we probably don't have anything that's going to um, get that unstuck. It's a map of the Northlands. I'm supposed to deliver this to, uh, Tunlayak, staying at the Journeyman Inn. But we've been to the Journeyman Inn, and there was, uh, there was no Tunlayak. And that I couldn't find him anywhere else, so... That's going to be the stairs bring us back up here. Uh, so let's leave, I guess, and maybe something happens. Wait, a small recess about the size of my fist with a thin duct extending from the recess to the circular hollow in the middle of the floor. Yeah, the, there is this whole thing, which is obviously going to be something, but like... I don't know that we have the, the thing to do anything here. Especially considering, like, the depth of April's explanation of what that is. I don't think we're gonna find anything here. Let's let's talk to this old guy again, maybe. Hello again, old man. Eh? Eh? It be you. And what are your hands doing, buddy? See you later. If I. Sorry to bother you. Hello. Uh-huh. Do you know anything about a god that fell from the sky into the sea? Of course. You find fallen gods most everywhere these days. They're an air in a hand. Really? No, of course not. There are no fallen gods in the sea. It wouldn't make much sense, would it? If the sea was full of gods just lying about the seabed. I mean, how do you so explain never heard Atlanta? Of such a thing happening? Atlanta, Atlantis. Now you got it. Bye. <laughs> Bye, jerkwad. No, we've already been here. Okay. So we've been to the pier in the city gates, we've been to the enclave. Square jaw and broad shoulders. A real farm boy. Quite a sexy one, too. I wonder if she's caught anything today. That's a funny looking animal. 
I'll visit the Marcuria Petting Zoo when I'm done saving the world. Yeah, I guess that she still has nothing Excuse to say. Excuse me? Yeah. Do you know when Tunlayak is expected back? I could not tell you, child, but from what I know of the ships in harbor, she will not find one that needs a navigator any time soon. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome, child. Okay, well... I don't really have any ideas right now. So I so once again I must look upon you, Zero. Go back to the library. like three more books to read. <laughs> April, are you all right there? Could I see some? Oh, shit. I'm looking for some information, but I'm not sure which book to ask for. No matter. I know a great deal about most of the books in here. What topic intrigues you? Are there any books about flying people who observe and tell stories? Winged storytellers, hmm? Uh, let me see what I can find. Hold on. Oh boy, you guys, are you ready for some more reading? I did find something of the island of Elias near the Briston oh. Atoll. Maybe I should try to go there. Wow, this is a really short book too. Uh Alatian. A crafty, wicked people who have recently dwindled in numbers, and whose ability to fly long distances has been steadily diminishing over the past few centuries. The Alatian are known for their ability to uh, remember and tell stories from before the dawn of mankind and up to modern events. The largest known tribe of Alatian who, with whom traders have occasional contact resides on the otherwise uninhabited, uh, uninhabited island of Elaeus, in the Briston Atoll. Are you done? Let me take that back for you. And that was literally all that was, and also appears to have given us a story point. And now, despite the fact that I haven't left, it's time to startle this oh. old man again. Oh. Could I see? Oh, sir. I'm looking. No. I need to find out which four magical people of Arcadia were given a piece of the stone disk that serves as the key to the Guardian's realm. The stone disk of the balance, yes? Yes, yes. There, there could possibly be something on that in... Um, uh, let me check. Just one moment. I feel like something that important should be like in a restricted archive or something. I did. I look like a serving maid. Yeah, good for you. Chapter 16 in the Eighth Scripture, the Scripture of Breaking. All good. 
Uh, regarding the disc of the balance and the events that came about when the disc was broken, the scriptures tell us that the disc was kept at the enclave for many thousands of years, safely guarded from any threat by the respect that uh, held by every man and woman for, uh, for the authority of the fathers. But with descent, and dis uh, with descent came disobedience, and disobedience brought immortality, and immortality be uh, immortality, immorality. <laughs> This is what you do is, you know, break the laws of biology and you can live forever. Let's try that sentence again. But with dissent came disobedience and disobedience brought immorality and immorality begat, uh, begat theft. Tyrant soldiers, aided by sentinel traitors, attempted to make away with the disc but were thwarted by the white of the kin herself intervening although forbidden to do so on behalf of the fathers. The disc was brought safely back to the enclave, but the threat would linger in the, in the minds of the minstrum and the vestrum. So it became that the disc was melted in the forge of the dragon's mouth, shaped into the elements of four magical people, and given to, to these respective people for safekeeping until such a time when it was decreed that the disc should once more be hold. One stone to the gentle souls that sing in the dark and shape the earth between their toes. One stone to the watchers of the woods, the ones who are outside. One stone to the two that make one of air and of sea. And one stone to the keepers of the dark flame, the eternally dark, the mariners. When the time comes for the disc to be made whole again, one person will make a journey to the four who hold the pieces and the pieces will be given willingly, because there will be no doubt to the righteousness of this person. I guess that's probably evil. Are you done? <laughs> yes, a journey. Probably the longest one that, that uh, well, April's ever had at the very least. Yeah, you know, once again, considering the fact that this is about a twenty-hour game. I'm looking. No. I'd like to learn more about dragons, about the dragon kin. Oh yes, yes, we have some wonderful books on that topic. Stay here. Bring me a picture book. I want to see the dragons. I did find. Okay, Secrets of the Dreadkin by Minstrel Meliak. Forward. The Dreadkin are known by many names between uh, throughout the Twin Worlds. In all tongue, they are often referred to as the Drakkin. In some variations of the Low Tongue, Drekin. In the Southlands, the word Dragic uh, refers specifically to the winged lizard's shape traditionally associated with the kin. In Urhad, the, the eternal spirits of the kin are simply called Drak regardless of their current shape. In Stark, most cultures refer to the kin as dragon. Draga, Draka, Dragon. Uh, though this usually refers only to the winged lizard-like shape and not to the spirit inhabiting the shape. In fact, while in Arcadia, the kin are respected and revered as eternal spirits with great significance in the balance and the all. In Stark, the kin are mostly creatures of mythology and fairy tales. However, in some Stark legends and scriptures, notably the Christian Bible, the name dragon is associated with the forces of evil, and thus the religious connotations do seem to have carried over in a somewhat distorted form. There are dragons in the friggin' Bible? Excuse me, what? This is the first I've heard of this. Anyway. Who or what are the Drakkin? Why not ask? Who is the creator? Or what is the all? 
questions thus asked will remain in perpetuity unanswered, for they are in truth unanswerable. To condense all knowledge of the Creator into one answer is futile, as is any attempt to define the All without describing every single element that makes up the All. So also with the Drake Kin. We cannot answer who is the kin or what is the kin, but we can provide some answers to the simpler questions, the questions that deal with what we see and hear and feel, and what we have been told by the kin themselves. Answers that together may give us, if only the faintest hint of the whole truth, uh, then at least some indication of who or what the drake kin are. Uh, born of the emptiness between the stars, reads the eleventh scripture of the balance, the scripture of time, uh, shaped in unison with the all, part of the all, yet outside the all. Uh, Drake Kin, note the ancient high tongue variation of Drake Kin. Uh, why so many vari variations and interpretations of the, the Drake Kin from culture to culture? The Kin have always been shrouded in mystery, and from mystery arises a legend and myth. The kin seem content to be seen as nothing but tall tales and figments of a bard's fertile imagination. And <laughs> Jesus rode around on one tall. Are you done? Uh, let me take that back. See, now, now I'm just remembered of the best blasphemy I've ever heard spoken. Um, which was, I believe, Jesus Christ riding a cybernetic dinosaur into a volcano. <laughs> Actually, hang on. <laughs> Let's just make... Oh. April, please. Oh. Let's just make sure that there is nothing in here. Oh. So there is nothing on I'm this page. And we still just have the same three options here. I forget. I know how it is. I forget things all the time. I even forgot my own name once. Couldn't remember it for a whole week. And then someone called for me, and I couldn't find him. Strangest thing. Uh, that's not exactly what the caption said, but sure. Actually, I don't feel like reading right now. Don't feel like very well, though it is the strangest thing I've heard in a while. How can you not feel like reading? When I've read every single book that I have access to. I'll see you later. Uh, yes, yes, good, good. Good, good. So presumably that gave us um, either a location we can go, or a trigger that opens up a location we can go. Well, there's certainly nothing new here. Hello. Uh-huh. Do you know the island of Elias? The vacation paradise of the ancient Delmari? Certainly. How do I get there? It's near the Briston Atoll, but boats rarely travel directly to Briston from Marcuria. You'd have to travel via Guienne. Can you give me a lift to Guienne on your ship? There are three problems with that scenario. Number one, there's no wind, so we can't set sail south. Number two, I lost my navigator a few weeks past, and I have yet to find his replacement. We can probably And number help three, you with that. you're a woman. We don't let women on board the White Dragon. Can I shove this guy into the water? Sexist. Sexy is just what I worry about. What with a boat full of men being out at sea for months at a time. Not sexy, sexist. I'm a sailor, girl. What do you expect? Good bedside manners? I'd really appreciate it if I could hitch a ride with you to Guyen. Ain't gonna happen. Sorry. Well, hi. That was a good talk. 
I mean, ultimately we can help with one of those things, but uh, ain't much we can do about the wind, and uh, I don't think April is going to become a man anytime soon. Uh, do we have anything new from the old sailor? Hello again, old man. Eh. Probably not, but let's take a look at the very least. Oh! Do you know the island of Elias? Aye, I be knowing lots and lots about the feared Isle of Elias. It's feared? How? Because... because... it be a place of cannibals! You really don't know anything about the island of Elias, do you? Uh... no, I do not. Good talk. Do you know how I can get passage on a boat going south? Aye, coin be the way, as me beloved wife always be saying. Cause she'd be running off with a wealthy merchant while I be away at sea. Women, never trusted one I didn't pay for again. I don't have much coin uh, at all. Okay. And I be at a loss, as do ye, unless... I need coin to travel in a boat, unless... What? Unless I be calling in a favor with the good Captain Horatio Nebeve, who be traveling to Gayen as soon as the wind be picking up. What kind of favor? Oh, he be owing me from back when I was his captain. Would you cash in your favor with Nebeve if I got your bird, bird back? Aye, I be promising anything to get me friend back. It be a deal. I mean, that's great and all, but I don't think the, the cops guy is going to want to play with us. See you later. If I not be dead, I... Anyway, that made the, the diary glow, so... That is definitely what we needed to do. Hey buddy, you probably want nothing to do with me, but I need this bird. I'm not talking to you, you cheat! I'm clearly not a cheat. Your anti-magic medallion thing did not light up. It's a talking bird. Okay, I'm guessing that uh, the navigator is still not here. Not a very good navigator if they can't navigate their way from here to the to the docks. And again, th this style of city is not uh, not one that is all that conducive to getting around in. I guess the West House doesn't have anything new. Hello? I have some more questions for you. Shoot. I don't have any more questions for you. <laughs> Very well. Thanks, Mr. West House. Always a pleasure, April.
Good conversation. Um... And there, there wasn't anything here. Enter, honored guest, and I would have been with you presently. You have anything new to say? Can I ask you a few questions? Yes. Thanks, Abnaxus. I guess not. You are always welcome, April Ryan. About my quest. Anything I can do to help, April Ryan. What else do you know about this god who fell from the sky? Only what I have told you. Someone with greater knowledge of the ocean and the creatures that live beneath its surface may be able to tell you more. So you don't know where I can find the disc? No. Ask Vestrum Tobias. I mean, I guess I can't ask That's him That's about again. it for I am glad. I'll talk to Blessings you. of the back. I don't really know what else to do at this point other than just go talk to the Vestrum again. Uh, where was it? Yes. Are you busy? I'm never too busy for you, April. What may I assist you with today? There's still a very obvious bug in uh, in his stands there. Where can I find the scriptures of the balance? Again, you will find these texts. Yeah, Isn't know there that. any way to locate the entrance to the Guardian's realm? Perhaps with careful investigation of the old texts, histories of Arcadia, of the Divide, the scriptures. I do not know, April, but it cannot hurt to look. Again, you will find the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Good day to you. Okie dokie. So again, I am at a loss as to what to do. So I do have to do the cup game, but like, the guy does not want to deal with me. Maybe you can trade for the bird? Here, do the monkey. Yeah, we probably don't want to trade the pocket watch, actually. Maybe the calculator. It's a calculator. Thought we won from him. I had forgotten that we got that from him. He didn't like the uh didn't like you cheating the game before, but how do we cheat? Give him the screwdriver? Oh. Or maybe I'll shake him with, with the, the screwdriver. My screw my magic wand for one of your prizes, and then I'll leave your game alone. What's the catch? No catch. You get a screw... Magic wand, and I get one of your... exotic prizes. Hmm. All right. Fair enough. Which prize would you like? The talking bird. <laughs> that scraggly heap of... A fantastic choice, young lady! 
Hold on a second and I'll get him for you. A fantastic choice, and I really, really mean that. Yeah, fantastic for you because then he can't be wisecracking in your ear all day. Are we just... What? What just happened? So, you're a bird, huh? Yeah, yeah. Wait a second. Did the old man send you to get me? I guess he did. My name's April. Oh, God, is there no escape? I mean, not that I like being cooped up in a cage for gamblers to gawk at and children to spit at all day, but give me a break. It's better than being locked away in a stinking chest. Thanks a whole bunch for rescuing me, April. You're welcome. No, 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 hey, hey, that's not what I meant. I was being sarcastic. Do you know what sarcastic means? Speak all tongue? Yes, yes, hmm? No, actually, I don't. I speak English. English? English? I don't know where you're from, lady, but you're weird. Okay, so let me go already, all right? Enough with the I'm human so I can boss the bird around shtick. We're all impressed. Sorry, I promised the old man I'd win you back. I need a favor from him badly. Yeah? So what's so important you'd sacrifice a bird's happiness and well-being? The fate of two worlds, billions of people, and the balance. Yeah? Yeah? So... No, forget it. So were you always just Bird? Or did you have a better name? No. It's always been Bird. My full name is That Damn Bird. I learned that when I was two weeks old. That damn bird, the old man would say. No good ball of feathers! Then he beat me with a stick. Really? Uh, no. He'd just stick me in the chest and forget about me. Which is almost as bad as beating, believe you me. I'm sorry to hear that, bird. You know, if you were my bird, I think I'd call you Crow. Crow? Yeah, well, I'm my own bird, lady, and I don't... Crow. You'd call me Crow? That's a pretty good name. A proper name at least not just an insult anyway i guess i'd better get you back to your master bird he's pining for you all he's pining for is coin to gamble with it's really none of my business sorry <laughs> sure you are he does have about as much mouth on him as crow t robot honestly I'm not talking I, to you, you cheat! I wasn't trying to talk to you, I was trying to leave this screen. Goodbye forever. Anyway, let's take this bird that uh, is just... It's Crow. That we managed to just jam into our pocket. And uh, give it, get, give him to the old sailor. Here's your bird, bird, sir. It wasn't easy, but I got him back. I sure hope you're grateful. Bird, blessed be the balance. Me faithful friend and companion be back. No, 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 not back in the chest, not in the chest! Ah! 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 Now can you help me get passage on a ship? I, I be a man of me word. Speak ye with Captain Horatio Nebeve of the White Dragon, the ship behind yous. Tell him Umbrianos be sending yous to cash in on that old favor he be owing me. Thanks, old man. Air, air. We're gradually making progress. Now let's talk to this asshole again. Hello. Uh, 
Uh-huh. You know old Umbrianos, don't you? The old drunk? Aye, he'd be a good captain once. But ever since he lost his ship, he hasn't been much worth to anyone. Be that as it may, you do owe him a favor, right? Aye, that I do. He saved my life more than once. And I wouldn't be captain of this beautiful lady if it weren't for him. Guess what? I'm here to cash in on that favor. Jal be damned. What did you do for the old geezer? Promise him your hand in marriage? Don't you mind that, old boy. Just get ready to sail south. You're giving me a lift to the island of Elias. I mean, since you're already heading for Gien. I am? That could prove a little tricky. Now come. For one, there is no wind. That accursed alchemist up north has put some kind of spell on the wind. Clax, I believe his name is. Roper Clax. Lives in a bloody rock somewhere beyond Riverwood. As long as he's got his dirty claws on the wind, this vessel ain't going nowhere. Then there's a little problem with my crew. I can't very well leave the harbor without a navigator, and my last one decided he didn't much care for the sea anymore and went off to marry a serving maid. But, okay, let's say I manage to free the wind and find you a new navigator. Then will you drop me off on Elias? <laughs> You think you will be able to defeat Clax, free the wind, and find me a new navigator? By Jal's pus-filled left eye, if you do such a trick, then I... I'll take you wherever you wish to go. Most likely, they'll be holding your funeral within the week, girl. <laughs> Just leave the madman be and let the army deal with him. Never you mind, as long as you keep your promise and take me to Elias. What's with Elias, anyhow? It's been deserted for hundreds of years, ever since the Dolmari fell victim to the Great Plague. I need to visit the Elation people, to listen to some of their stories. As if there aren't enough stories here. <laughs> it takes all sorts, that be for sure. Okay, so... We have definitely advanced the story, speaking of stories. So now we need to find that navigator and one, give him the map and two, tell him to go use it. And also, we need to find time for clocks, which seems to recall this game was released in the, in the 90s. Surely there's time. Well, that's a new location. Can't interact with you. Okay, we're not going to try pathing around or anything. It's a small barn. It's a farmhouse. It's some kind of cattle, but not the kind of cattle they breed in Kansas. Listen, we're not in Kansas anymore, Dorothy. Those monuments? They're enormous, like man-made mountains. I wonder what they are. What they were made for. Monumental. No kidding. Uh, into forest is apparently the only thing that we have here, so... Save for good measure, and... Let us away into the forest. How did you get out of your box? Well, I guess we're going to get a companion. It's a discarded wagon wheel. In a pre-baked cutscene too. A very short one. Do you always travel like you got a two-headed Basparian nymphate on your tail? 
I couldn't keep up half the time. Crow, is that you? Of course, there was that pair of stunning Robin Redbreasts. Twins, did you know? Not as Twins, if I could just leave twins. them without a kiss or two. Or twelve, as it turned out. Eh, <sighs> maybe I'm just out of shape after being stuck in boxes and cages and knapsacks for the past 20 years. I guess it is you. Of course it's me! How many birds do you know with both good looks and a sense of humor? You got a sense of humor. Oh, funny. Nah, that's funny. What are you doing here, Crow? What am I doing here? What am I doing here? How about a nice to see you, Crow? Or I've missed you so much, Crow. Or at least a glad to see you out of that chest, Crow. It is nice to see you, Crow. How did you escape? Cunning, milady. Of course, that keg of Andrigan stone liquor the old geezer got his hands on didn't hurt. I've never seen such a shameful display of public drunkenness in my life. Well, not since the last time I had a thimble full of wine. Yeah, boy, were those ladies in for a surprise. When they were told I could talk, I'm sure they didn't count on my encyclopedic knowledge of Dolmari obscenities. The old man was going to gamble me away again, you know. Went straight back to the cup's handler after the, uh, celebration. So... I decided to split before they put me back in a cage. That place was like a prison without the amenities. And let's not even mention the food. Did you ever try roasted El Guan Dung? Ugh, pooey, duh, don't, ever. So I pecked a button here and some soft tissue there and fled. I had nowhere else to fly, so I decided to join you on your uh, quest. It sounded like a spot of good old fashioned fun. Like a bird's own adventure. It's not as if I came after you because I like you, though. You don't have any feathers. Thank God for that. Okay, if you want to join me, I wouldn't mind some company. I'm guessing you'll be using your wings, though, and not your feet? The ground's no place for a free spirit like myself, baby. Besides, I hear there are a lot of good-looking birds in this forest. And let me tell you... They don't parade about on the ground like winged chickens. Just try to slow down once in a while. Let me catch up. Sure. But how do I get your attention if I need to talk to you? Can you whistle? Like this? <laughs> Sorry. But wait a second. I got a little flute. I could use it to call you. I'm not a sheepdog. Let's get that straight. You play your tune, and I'll consider your request. I won't be flapping to attention like a tame soldier, Hawk. Deal. We better get moving, though. It's getting late. Aye, aye, Captain. I'll try to keep an eye out ahead in case there's... trouble. Alright, see you later, Cookie Masterson. Let us delve into the forest after that display. Oh, lost control. Hey, buddy. Oh, dear. Oh, dear me. Please, human, don't kill me and skin me. I haven't even sung to the soil yet. Well, start singing. Don't worry, I'm not going to kill you or skin you. Oh my, that is good news. Very good indeed. Who are you? My name's April. What's yours? In my language, it's Bandu Umana Banta Au Rubana Bitana Benort. It means the little one who tries hard to live up to his father who sings to the soil. How many takes That's a that mouthful. Take? So, um, what do I call you? You can call me Ben Bandu, the sad little one. Banda is the name of my people. We are the little ones. Okay. Why are you sad, Ben Bandu? I'm looking for my brother. 
He's been gone in the forest for many days, and I've not heard him sing to us. Our people don't walk about the forest much. It's too dangerous for us. You haven't seen my brother, have you? He's short, about my height, with a tan coat and a mischievous glint in his eye. You're the first mole. The first Banda I've met. Oh dear. I hope he's all right. A lot of our people have disappeared this summer. What happened to the Banda that disappeared? We don't really know. But there's something evil in this forest. Something that doesn't like the Banda. I shouldn't be out here looking, but I must find my brother. If I see him, I'll let him know you're looking for him. Oh, thank you. Thank you ever so much. I guess since it keeps presenting me with this option. Aren't your people called the Mole People? That's what the city dwellers and farmers call us. They say it with sharp tongue. Moles. Dirt diggers. They don't like us very much. Our given name is Banda. The Little Ones. Or the Banda Banta. The little ones who sing to the soil. How do you sing to the soil? When we're old enough, and we found our voices, we just sing. And the earth shapes itself to our needs. We live in harmony with the earth. Just like the birds do with the air. Good luck on your search, Ben Bandu. Sad little one. And the best of luck to you, April. Please, if you see my brother, Tell him to come home. We're all so very worried. Yeah, that, that little April in the middle is like... Oh. Robot. Roll call. Hey, Crow. Would you mind doing me a favor? I was having this tete-a-tete -tete with a pretty young sparrow, but hey, crow at your service. Did you say favor? Oh, sure thing, unless it's something extremely... No, no, make that even remotely dangerous. I don't like dangerous. Not at all. Just scout out the forest from your vantage point. See if you can find Ben Bandu's brother. Ben who? The mole I just met. I thought you were supposed to be watching me. Didn't you pay attention? No. Uh, mole, you said. They're savages, the lot of them. You eat birds, even. Crow, I eat birds. You probably do, too. Hmm, yeah, I love a roasted duckling and a tangy orange. Oh, uh, well, yeah, 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 I see your point. Looking for a lost mole, then, are we? Yeah, and they're called the Banda. I never got into that whole PC thing. It's not Tyrox, it's the tyrant. Don't say chicks, say birds. Don't say birds, say women. <laughs> I don't know. It's all a little too complicated for a simple man of the air like myself. Just go look for the lost mo- the lost Bandu, okay? Yes, ma'am. That's a great conversation we started having there that I didn't want to really keep having. Of course, it's not any worse than uh, than West House and his bullfighting. The bridge is out. Damn. How will there ever be time for clocks? The bridge has been completely destroyed. The edges are charred. Whatever caused this, it couldn't have been flood water or simple wear and tear. I'll have to find some other way across. This gorge is too deep to cross and the river too fierce. Hmm. Well, this is new. It's a woman, I guess. An old woman, and it looks like she's in pain. Oh, please, pretty lady, pretty, please help me. I've fallen and I can't stand up. What happened to you? 
Oh, I was out picking bones, uh, berries, berries for my stew and flowers. Yes, pretty flowers. Then I tripped over a big old root and twisted my ankle. It hurts so. Please help me home, pretty lady, please. Who are you? Oh, I'm nobody, nobody at all. Just a frail old woman picking bones. Berries, picking berries for her stew so she can feed her prisoner. Guests, feed her guests and fatten them up for the long winter. She seems nice. Why do you keep swallowing your words? Because I'm just a frail, old, forgetful woman, yes. Where do you live? I live not far from here, not far at all. No, help me home and I'll cook you a fine stew, I promise. Yes, I promise. Just help me home and I'll reward you for your compassion. Yes, you'll have your reward. Well, I see absolutely no reason to help this old lady. All right, I'll help you home. Oh, yes. Thanks, plump little Trish. A nice, pretty girl, thanks. Okay. I still need your help, Plump Pretty Girl. I can't walk all the way home by myself, you see. Help me home and I'll cook you. A good, thick, creamy stew. Yum, I'm getting hungry myself. Let's go. Lead the way, ma'am. Yes! Let's go! Come on, just follow me, my sweet treat. So that wasn't creepy at all. What are you talking about? The old woman seems capable of walking on her own, strangely enough. Maybe she just needed some, uh, encouragement. Yeah, save for absolutely no reason. Looks like a cozy little burrow. Like a hobbit hole. Come in, come in, honored guest. I'll just check on my stuffing. On uh, my stew, yes. My thick, delicious stew. Oh dear, what have we here? This stew isn't good enough to stuff. To serve a guest as plump, as well-built and delicious, as honored as you, my dear. Why don't you just wait here and I will go pick some more berries and spices for my stuff, my stew. But wait, what about your bad back? Yeah, she looks fine. What a strange... I mean, what a strange woman. There's something not quite right about this place. You think? Like those skulls, for one. They look disturbingly humanoid. Uh-huh. What are those things? They look like... What's that sound? Where's it coming from? Looks like a solid piece of furniture. It's got a chain tied around it. There's that strange knocking sound again. It 
It's locked solid. What was that? It sounds like somebody's trapped inside the cabinet. Yeah, I think we've already established that. Anybody Thanks. in there? Oh, please, let me out! Anybody in there? Oh, please, let me out! It's too big for me to carry around. But maybe I could use it somewhere in this room. I mean, I guess that works. That's not what I was expecting to happen, but you know. Also, Who are you? Are you going to eat me? I'm April, and I've come to rescue you. Oh my, did my tribe send you? So to speak, I met your brother, Ben Bandu. Ben Bandu? Bandu Umanu Banta Orobana Biutan Binoart? I think so. He said to call him Ben Bandu. Because he was sad for me? He will be so glad to find that you've rescued me then. Um, yeah. There could be a tiny little problem with that. The Gribbler captured you too? I guess she... it... whatever the Gribbler is did capture me. That took me by surprise since I did come here willingly. That's how she works, the Gribbler. She tricks Banda and humans to come here to her house, and then she cooks them and eats them. What a surprise. Friendly old lady, she's not. What's your name? Bandu Utamatuta Uyatan Ayama Binaort. I'm That's sure a little difficult that. for me to remember. How about I call you Bandu Uta? Oh my, yes. Yes, that would be fine. We have long names, us Banda. As long as our tunnels. You can tell me more about your people later. Right now, we need to find a way out of here. Also, April, you complain about not being able to carry that broom around with you, yet you in you shoved an entire ass bird into your pocket for a minute. Apparently, I can use you on things. Let's chuck you in the fire. Come over here. Let's try something. Oh dear. Oh dear me. I guess I could have talked to him before. That would have probably been. What are you going idea. to do? I'm gonna get you out of here. Hold on. Can you break the window and get through? Oh dear. I'm so sorry, but it doesn't seem like I can do that. The window was too thick for me to break. I mean, why don't we use some of these torches? Why not devices? examine them too closely? Just chuck a that at that, and it'll be fine. I can't climb up there. Besides, I'm too big to fit through that tiny window. I look like a serving maid. Good for you. It's a window, but it's too small for me to squeeze through. Grotesque decor. It's a broom. By the looks of this place, I don't think it's been used much. Man, such a critic you are. Anyway, since uh, since we didn't actually progress out the window, I have the opportunity to talk to this moment. Oh dear, whatever shall we do? Good conversation. Something's cooking all right. I just can't put my finger on what exactly. It's a wooden table with a tablecloth made of some kind of animal skin. It's a loose floorboard. Now that's interesting. Something's cooking all right. I just can't put my finger on what exactly. That's a large fireplace and a fierce fire. Hmm. Also interesting that it put me on the second page, which was empty. 
And I can't go back to the second page, obviously, because it is empty. What if we did the monkey on the plank now? Pry it open with the push pin. Wait, what? For a second there, I thought that was actually going to do something because she moved. Looks a little shaky. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? If I'm not careful, I could bring that pillar crashing down. If you are careful, you could bring it crashing down constructively. <laughs> Okay, that's not quite the answer. Hoping this is not one of those situations where I'm just gonna have to rub everything against everything and hope something works. Oh dear, whatever shall we do? I don't know, uh, Bandai Namco. Um... This photograph? No. I guess he's not around. I should try again later. I mean, he might very well be around, but how is he going to get in? Hmm. Maybe I have to calculate my move. What if you're the mastermind and you want me to pay you? You want a crappy candy? You want a crappy used candy? The door's locked from the outside. Wait a second. The door is locked? Oh my god, the door is locked! I'm trapped! You're only realizing this now, April. <laughs> Although I'm not sure what good a uh, door is that is locked from the outside. Let's use my cash the card. The door is locked from the outside. Hmm. Something's cooking all right. I just can't put my finger on what exactly. Not so solid after all. Grotesque decor. <laughs> Invoke the monkey upon this window. No. Ah. I mean, I could just 
I could just do what I said and rub everything on everything and eventually find a, a solution, but like, who really wants to see that? What's, um, what, what you got, Zero? Ah, oh, boy. The one thing that I didn't mouse over. I can't climb up there. Besides, I'm too big to fit through that tiny window. Oh, that's fine. This skull can probably fit through the window. Sure can. Hey, mole man. I got Come you. Come over out. here. Let's try something. Oh dear. Oh dear me. What are you going to do? I'm going to get you out of here. Hold on. Hope you're ready to get sh cut by shards of glass. You're... Hey, Ugh. wait a second. I need you to open the door for me. Don't run off. Damn. Well, it looks like we didn't think that one through. What the hell am I gonna do now? Uh-oh. I am back with the berries and... What's happened here? Why is the... Oh dear. I didn't need this to be rendered in full 3D, I'm gonna be real. What have you done, you stupid little human? I... I just saved an innocent person from being your dinner, Gribbler, so there! So... I think you could come into my house and set my dinner free and get away with it? Nasty habits. Well, well, I will get away with it because soon a lot of people, armed people, will come to get me and to kill you. So you'd better, you better run away while you still have a chance. I guess you will be my dinner tonight then. And I had hoped to save you for tomorrow. Oh, come on, Gribbler. You can't honestly think you can eat. Step aside. I know karate. Beat it. Get out of here. Oh, shit. I look like a serving maid. Donk. Well, I think the Gribbler is dead now. Or if not, then we'll be dying very, very shortly. Let's not stick around to find out. Hi, Ben. Oh dear, oh dear. Where's the monster? She vanished like smoke up a chimney. Do you know what happened to your brother? He just ran off, didn't even stop to say goodbye. I, I met him back on the road. He was running like the wind. Said that when you helped him out of the window, he spotted the Gribbler returning, so he went to get help. I told him to alert the village, gather as many of the Banda as possible, and come back here. And that I'd try my best to aid you in the meanwhile. Thank you, that was very brave of you. Brave of me? Oh my, you defeated the Gribbler. You are a hero. I owe the life of my brother to you, the life of everyone in our tribe. I know my fellow Banda will want to reward you for your gracious deeds. You are invited to our village with me, and I will tell my people to prepare a grand feast for you. You don't have to do that, Ben. I just did what anybody would have done. But you did it. Give me your map, and I will show you where our village is. Then I must run ahead to tell the Banda that the Gribbler is no more! It was then that Deal Gribble faked his own death and became Rusty Shackleford.
Um, so yeah, we now have access to the Banda Village after defeating the Quibbler. And um, hopefully this will lead to one of the four uh, pieces of, of the disc that we need. And uh, we shall be heading over to the Banda Village after the break. So y'all can take a moment, uh, get some to drink, go to the bathroom if you need to, stretch your arms, stretch your legs, stretch your teeth. And in about 10 to 15 minutes, we shall continue on with our adventures in the, uh, the forest of, uh, I forget the name of the forest. Anyway, I'll see you in a bit.